So that big drop right there is my line and uh, it's probably like 12 foot. Landing is pretty steep, but because you got no speed, it's really brutal on suspension. So let's see how the, the tie handles the big impact. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my propane tie trail bike custom build, and this is the pro bike check. As you know, Propane Bike is my new frame sponsor. I'm extremely happy about it because Propane offers a full range of mountain bikes, downhill bikes, freeride bike, enduro bike, trail bikes, e-bike, plenty of, uh, of bikes that I'm gonna be able to ride and for me it's really important. One other thing, and I mentioned it before, but for me it's really important to be able to ride the bike as mullet and Propane designed some bikes specifically for mullet, which was really cool. And the other thing that's I believe probably the most important thing when purchasing a bike is checking out the geometry and obviously you know before signing with Propane I studied the geometry and I believe the geometry of their bike is what's gonna work best for me. Um, in the past I found the reach on my bike was a bit too short for my liking and the rear end was short which makes the bike playful but you don't get you know the full amount of traction and stability that I was hoping to get. And so, yeah, super stoked on that. So I'm gonna show you uh, that bike, it's a Thai. So uh, the Thai either come in 29 or 27.5. I've chose the 29 because the geometry, I believe fits me better. It's a bit longer uh, than 27.5, so a bit longer. And I've decided to mullet that bike. So this bike has a 27.5 rear wheel. And the reason why I was able to do that is because I put a longer fork on the front. So I've got a 180 fork on the front. So that makes the bike a bit slacker, the seat tube angle a bit slacker, but even by doing that, the position for pedaling is still very, comfort like, very comfortable, very efficient, uh, because originally the, the seat tube is quite steep, so worked out really well. You have to keep in mind that the bottom bracket drops a little bit, but I run my suspension stiffer than most people, so my position at SAG is actually higher than what most people will experience uh, with a similar bike. So my bottom bracket doesn't drop as much as it would uh, if you were doing that on your own bike. So it works out really well as a mullet for me, but I also have the same bike with the exact same build, just a 170 fork and 229 wheels uh, that I will be reviewing in the future. As you guys know, I'm not a big guy. I'm five foot seven, which is 170 centimeters. So I've chosen to ride a tie in size medium. When looking at a bike, I don't really look at sizes. What I really focus on is the geometry of the bike. So I look at the reach, I look at the chain stay, and I look at the wheelbase. Um, in this case, this bike has a 451 millimeter reach, which is five, six millimeter longer than what I'm used to. And it's really good because I've actually wanted a slightly longer reach for a while. Some brands go crazy with the reach and they go on size medium to 470 or 480 millimeter which I believe is way too much and it's only gonna be usable for like the top riders out there who are trying to, you know, win World Cup and win Enjoy World Series. But biking is about having fun and I'm confident with the reach at 451. I feel really good and I don't want any longer. And uh, yeah, it's been working really good with me. Uh, it's got 445 millimeter chain stay, which is 15 millimeter longer than what I'm used to. But what that brings, that brings my weight a little bit forward. I'm more centered on the bike. And obviously it's way more stable, but it's not any less fun. You just shift your weight a little bit forward. And you know, that extra stability really, I feel like brings me confidence when I go really fast. So it's been really good for me. Um, what else? Wheelbase, we are at 1230 millimeters. Uh, so it's 10 millimeter longer than what I'm used to. And uh, yeah, that's been, that's been really awesome. It's just like, even though 10 millimeters is only this, that really brings me extra stability, extra confidence. And I feel I can really rate the bike a bit uh, better on the corner. At high speed, it's definitely more stable. And that doesn't take away anything on the tight stuff. You can still move the bike super easily. So I think, yeah. I think Propane really nailed it with the geometry and to me really geometry and suspension design is like the two things you should focus uh, when purchasing a bike and when choosing a bike. So I've been super stuck on that. 
talking about suspension, this is the Pro 10 suspension uh, design. It's super unique to propane. Looks uh, looks a bit like a dirt bike almost. And um, yeah, it's been really good. I've mounted a cold shock uh, on this frame. I also have an air shock on my other bike. So normally uh, you earn an air shock, you know, for to save weight. But I do prefer the performance uh, of the cold. I got a better feedback of the terrain on my feet. But the problem with using a cold shock is that it makes your suspension more linear. That being said, propane has got suspension that's like plenty progressive with lots of um, uh, mid support on the suspension. So the cold shock has been working really good. I've been doing some really uh, big drop, some super harsh landing, and the bike has really taken the impact super smoothly. So it's been really good. For suspension, I'm riding the DVO Onyx single crown. On this bike, that's a 180 mm fork. I run 75 PSI, two to three clicks of low speed, and about two turns of high speed compression, which is basically middle of the setting. And for the ODT, which stands for off the top, which is basically how supple and how sensitive is gonna be the fork on the first part of the travel, I run setting in the middle, which is about seven turns. For uh, progressivity, because you can add or remove some oil into the air chamber to make the fork ramp up more or less, depending what you like. I actually run the fork completely stuck out of the box. So if you go on DVOSuspension.com and purchase that fork, you can basically run it exactly the same way I do. For the shock, I run uh, the DVO Jade X, so that's a cold shock and uh, I've chosen a 500 pound spring, which so far has been really good for me. I got really good grip of the top and uh, a lot of support on bigger hits. So unless I gain some weight, I'm gonna stick to the same uh, to the same coil, I think. And if you wish to purchase any of those DVO suspension product, make sure you head to www.dvosuspension.com and use the code REMI15 and you can get 15% off. For wheels, same as the last four years, I'm riding the E13 LG1 R Enduro, those are carbon wheels, they're extremely strong. I really like the performance, they're super responsive, and also the reliability is absolutely insane. I never have to check my spoke tension. I don't even check it anymore because you know the tension of the spoke are always perfect. And I mean I've cracked a couple of uh, of rims last year, but that's because I run extremely low pressure. I don't pay for my wheels and I'm also trying to push the limit. Um, but with regular tire pressure, I don't even know if I could actually uh, crack a rim. So yeah, it's been awesome. As you guys know, for tires, you've seen it on the side, it says grappler. So yes, that's a prototype tire. You'll hear more about it soon. Um, all I can say is that I'm really enjoying it. Works out really great on slab, but also digs pretty good on the dirt. I can show you the tread pattern. Uh, but that's a downhill casing on the back, Enduro casing on the front with Mopo compound. It's been super fun helping E13 to develop that product. And uh, what else we got? Cassette, that's a E13 Elixir R. Uh, so that's a 12 speed cassette, 9 to 50 T's. And I got uh, a TRS chain guide. Uh, with a carbon plate and uh, yeah, if you wish to purchase any E13 product, go ahead, check out the link in the description and use the code REMI15. For brakes, same as the last three years, I'm trusting the Ace Dominion A4. If you followed me for, you know, like three, four years, you will have noticed that my braking control have actually stepped up when I went with Ace brakes. Uh, I run the C-turn pad and, you know, wet, dry condition, anything. I'm absolutely blown away by how consistent, how powerful, and also the modulation of that brake. Absolutely love it. I run a 203mm disc front and back, and uh, that's it. For handlebars, stem, and seat post, I'm trusting one-up components. The guys are just down the street from us, Squamish local company. And uh, yeah, the product have been awesome. I'm sure you have plenty of it already, but I run their bar with a 35mm rise, and then, because I like to be higher, uh, I find like, you know, the higher I am, the more confident I am, really helps me when it's steep and gnarly. Uh, and I run the, the stem as a 35 millimeter. They do have a 50 millimeter option, but the 35 brings my weight a little bit more uh, toward the center of the bike. And I find it gives me a better position. 
Uh, the bars are cut at 750 millimeters, which is good for me because I don't have a super wide shoulder. Give me like really good control, still plenty of stability. And the seat post is a 180 millimeter seat post, but I actually put the shim stack in it to reduce the travel to 170 millimeter. I'm a smaller guy, I don't need 180 because I want to keep the seat in my knees. I don't want it below my knees because believe it or not, but when you ride the bike on gnarly condition and when you jump, you actually use the seat to move the bike around. And uh, yeah, it's been awesome. I also run the EDC cap and uh, you can find those products on Jensen USA. Check out the link in the description and that support my channel. For seat and grips, I'm using the Ergon product. This is the SM Enduro Pro TI. Uh, so it's been specifically designed for Enduro. The rear of the seat is actually shorter. So if you run a longer travel trail bike with a 29 rear wheel, you are going to be able to avoid a tire buzz and you don't want tire buzz. So tire buzz is when the tire hits the seat. You don't want that because that can lock your rear wheel on a big uh, landing, it can be really dangerous. So Ergon has designed that seat specifically for that. And for grips, I run the GE1 Enduro um, size regular. They also have a slim size, uh, but the regular have a little bit more padding, they're a little bit thicker, and yeah, work out really well for me. Gloves or no gloves, I love those grips. For transmission, I'm riding the rotor product. You got the Capic cranks on the front. Solitis uh, oval chainring. So the advantage of the oval chainring is that when you pedal uphill, your power is more consistent and that makes going over slippery routes uh, more efficient. You can get a better traction. So really like that. It's extremely reliable. Chainring uh, literally does not wear out. So you buy one and you keep it for quite a while. And for the chain, I'm adding the KMC SL 12 spin chain. Um, been awesome. I've actually never broken a KMC chain before, which is pretty cool. Um, transmission, of course, rest of the transmission, the rotor 1x13. You can set it up either a 13 speed or a 12 speed. Mine obviously is a 12 speed because I got a 12 speed cassette. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful product. If you look at it, it's um, yeah, they made a really, really great job with the, with the design. And it's pretty cool to have only one uh, shifter. So it's the same shifter to go up and down the gear. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really cool testing that product with those guys. So in case you wonder, the black collars around the chain is simply a dampening system for your chain. So what happens is that your chain is in between the collar and can only smash against the collar which are made of rubber. So that's gonna basically cancel any chain noise you may have. And if you want to check it out, go on stfubike.com and use the code REMI15, will give you a discount. On the front, we got the Mudhugger. This is the long version. I always ride with a mudguard, summer or winter. Just protects from, you know, obviously projection of mud, um, you know, little pieces of wood, but also dust. It also protects your fork seals. Check out mudhugger.com and use the code REMI20 for discounts. We got a Topic bottle cage. Camelback water bottle with only water, no beer or no red wine. Thompson seat clamp. Uh, oh yeah, pedals, we got some French pedals, so time cycling, those are the special 12 model. I prefer them over the special 8 because they are uh, a bit of a, of a bigger platform, so it gives me more support on big impact. I run the pins only on the back, you can adjust the spring tension, they are extremely reliable. And uh, I really like the float, it's really good if you have like you know, some pain in, on, your, on your knees because your feet can really float 13 or 17 degrees. They've been awesome. I absolutely love them. They work really well in the mud as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the bike. I hope you guys enjoy the bike check. I'm just super stoked. I'm incredibly happy. I mean, look at this thing. It's, it's a beautiful bike. It rides really well. I feel really good on it. I'm just so, like, yeah, I'm just super excited. I'm super stoked to be to be riding it i'm looking forward to put out more content if you enjoyed this video make sure you like it subscribe to the channel and if you want to use some of those discount code make sure you check out the link in the description and yeah that's it thank you guys